It was a memory of when the Kier was preparing and studying for his upcoming battle with Madame Eight Legs. As his eyes remained focused throughout the late night, he recalled from his practical evaluation that he had a suspicion when he crossed paths with the Cerberus that was chased out of the territory. A question came across his mind. Why did the barbarians need to chase away dangerous monsters from the La Rouge J. El Noir mountain? The reason behind it was due to territorial expansion. The barbarians were chased into the La Rouge J. El Noir mountain due to the madam. With that, Vikir was able to find the madam's lair, which was hidden at the back. The true reason behind why the madam used the barbarians in the forest was to drive out the Cerberus and Hell monsters, so that she could distance herself from her weakness which was Hellfire. Vikir couldn't believe that Madame's weakness had been right under his nose this entire time. Now, we return to the moment when Vikir was aiming his sword directly at the ox bear's corpse. As he inserted his blade deep into the dead body of the ox bear, he unleashed a small spark made up of the Hellfire that Madame was afraid of, causing a chain reaction to occur. As the gases in the dead body started to ignite from the Hellfire that Vikir had brought, the purple hellfire continued to spread throughout the cave using the dead bodies that the madam had kept on the walls with her web. The Kier's hellfire explosion was only made bigger. The madam could do nothing but watch in horror with her multiple eyes as the purple hellfire reached even closer to her. It was time for her to receive the karma that she had accumulated after killing so many. Even the purple hellfire turned into deathly skulls representing her many victims as the purple hellfire finally engulfed her completely. Vakir easily made his way down the outside of Madame's lair, watching its entrance be covered in smoke and purple embers. He went on to explain that since he found the Madame's weakness of hellfire, he needed to make sure that she didn't escape from the lair, which was filled with webs. He also knew that she couldn't jump out due to her many legs and that the Madame, who can't use its webs right now, would find it impossible to escape. No matter how tough it is as long as it's alive, if it breathes in smoke, its inside will burn due to the high temperatures of hellfire, its outer skin will melt. As Vikir continued to watch as the lair burned throughout the night, he believed that all he needed to do right now was to wait for the madam to die. Once the fire goes out, he will just need to get the madam's ability. But then he felt an immense pressure that forced him down. Vikir immediately turned around to scan the area to see where it was coming from. He could see that the entire area was feeling the same immense pressure. Soon enough, the pressure was gone, and so were the flames that were covering the entrance of the lair, leaving only black smoke behind. Until something quick erupts and cuts across the mountain. Something was emerging from the sudden attack from within the mountain, much to the shock of Vikir. The madam had survived his explosion plan revealing her body filled with battle wounds from the hellfire. But Vikir couldn't believe that she had destroyed the entire mountain in order to escape. As she slowly made her way down from her mountain, the madam started to look for Vikir with her endless amount of eyes. Seeing that she couldn't find him at all, the madam decides to spit out a gigantic green ball of poison into the air. It explodes in the skies above like a firework splitting itself into smaller balls of poison aimed everywhere throughout the forest. She was going with the classic method of spray and pray. Her poison was deadly, as the moment it touched the trees and branches in the forest, it melted instantly. But the madam was still feeling furious. As she made loud hissing noises, unaware that he was hiding directly beneath her, he looked up at her from below with nervous sweat drops appearing on his face as he breathed heavily. Vikir couldn't believe that the madam couldn't find him. He notices that it was because she couldn't use her eyes and skin. After all, they had been burned off, and because she had overexerted herself and destroyed the mountain in the process. There was a large crack in her shell. So Vikir places another plan in motion as he uses her legs to leap onto her body, believing that it is still possible to beat her. Vikir does a backflip before summoning his Beelzebub sword. With his eyes focused, he needs to aim for the crack that was created when the madam destroyed the mountain. And so he does as he planned to land a powerful attack using the Baskerville Six technique. But the madam was tough as his attack simply bounced off her body. She felt the pain as she hissed even louder. The Kier immediately retreated onto the top of a nearby tree, thinking that he needed to hit the crack a few more times. 
and so, he went back into focus mode, hoping to land another attack on her. But before he could, something started to happen with the madam. Her eyes started to shed their skin, revealing fully healed and operational eyes that spotted Vakir right in front of her. He could only stare in awe before being greeted by an attack from one of her legs, sending him flying across the forest, leaving destruction behind. Vakir finally came to a stop after being sent flying. Looking back to where the madam was, he knew that he had made a mistake. He didn't think that she was able to regenerate by shedding parts of her skin. With both his legs blown away, it might be because he was tired, but Vakir's regeneration speed was slow right now. He started to breathe even more heavily as the madam made her way towards him. But as he tried to get up right away, a voice asked him a question. So why are you fighting a monster like that? A figure appeared beside him as he lay on the ground, telling Vakir that if it was for his goal, then he should have left the forest already. Vakir's eyes started to widen as his breathing became unstable. The voice reminded him that to take revenge on Hugo, he should have only thought about killing him. Vakir finally looked up to see who it was. It was him from the past in the form of a thin entity. The past Vakir reminds him that killing Hugo was his only desire. His past self's head reappears on the ground beside him, telling Vakir that he had become dull and slow since he came to the forest. With tears of blood dripping down his eyes, Vakir's past self shouts at him to remember his hatred for Hugo and the feeling he experienced when Hugo sliced his throat. We now turn to the original Vakir van Baskerville, who explains that his only reason for existing was to do the missions given to him by his master Hugo. No matter what the situation was, the mission was more important than his life. The moment he was born, that was what he was taught. That was how things were, and that was the only way he felt fulfilled. But sadly, he realized too late that all those things weren't what he believed in when he was beheaded by Hugo. That was when he knew that the life he lived had been futile and in vain. And so we return to the present where the original Vakir reminded his current self that those were the reasons why he wanted to make Hugo feel the same thing he did, the despair from back then. The beheaded Vakir shouts at he, telling him that he messed everything up. The head continues to remind Vakir that killing Hugo and destroying Baskerville was the sole reason behind his existence. Now, chains started to appear around Vakir's neck as he recalled his purpose of killing Hugo. Looking back at his life, he wonders if there was ever a time he had gone against Hugo's will. In his past life, there was one moment in his life, the moment he thought of deserting the group as they made their way back after a mission. As the others continued to walk back, Vakir stood alone, staring at the empty forest. But then he changed his mind and followed the others back because he chose the path that his chain was leading him. Deep down, Vakir knew that he was just another one of Hugo's well-trained bloodhounds. But the current Vakir gritted his teeth hard after being reminded of his past. He tells his past self to not tie him down with either Hugo's commands or his sense of duty for revenge. Vakir declares loudly that he will no longer give him the right to do anything because the moment he was executed by Hugo, Vakir decides that he will no longer live like a bloodhound that hunts his prey. But he regretted the decision he made because what he sincerely wanted right now was something different. His past self starts to fade away as the madam finally spots him. She lets out a horrifying scream before sending one of her legs towards Vakir, who is still lying flat on the ground with his legs missing. As he gripped the earth hard with his fingers, the thing he wanted in this life was freedom. Vakir manages to somehow leap out of the way, dodging the madam's attack as he rolls away. Due to the impact of the attack, he started to think about his desires, from his revenge against Hugo to the place that he wanted to protect and return to. With these desires in mind, Vakir's reason for fighting was reignited as he wanted to live by his desires this time. So he tells himself to get up and fight to no longer be controlled by anyone or anything. This time before the madam's leg could reach him, a familiar hair is seen just as a powerful blue attack strikes the madam's leg knocking it away from Vakir and saving his life in the process. The attacks didn't end there as more shots were fired at the madam. He looks to the spot where those attacks came from with a stunned expression on his face. Up on the cliff beside the madam were the shadows of a few people. 
mother and daughter duel have appeared with their bows raised together. Ian shouts at the madam, warning her to not touch her husband's candidate. She then quickly tells Vakir that they had arrived to fight alongside him. It turns out that every Balak warrior had arrived to help him. Ahan was annoyed that Vakir didn't even tell his brother about the burden he was taking on, while the other warriors began to prepare themselves for a battle against the madam. They raised their bows together, eagerly wanting to help the hero of the forest. Their simple arrows managed to land on the madam, catching her attention. Even though they didn't do much damage, it gave Vakir enough time to regenerate his legs. As he appears on the back of the madam, he couldn't believe that she didn't listen to him when he told her not to come here. But he was glad because thanks to Ian he survived. With that, he manages to land another powerful blow onto the crack on the madam's body, but his attack was deflected this time as well. Even though it didn't work, he was determined to try and try again. The madam wasn't going to take all of these attacks for nothing and decided to stomp on everything around her with her multiple legs. The warriors on their beasts were dodging her attacks, warning one another that the madam was going on a rampage. Ian was glad to see this as it meant that Vakir had her cornered. So she ordered everyone to keep fighting. Akia, on the other hand, was watching the battle on the cliff. Her face was filled with fatigue as she breathed heavily, still suffering from her wound. She had deemed the madam a disaster, so she never even thought of killing her, as if all the cells in her body thought it was the obvious thing to do. But the young warrior Vakir showed her something, how to destroy fear, how to go against the disaster. So Akia was determined to do this as her eyes glowed bright blue. She knew she had to do something even if she vomited blood or her injury ruptured. She needed an attack that could open up a path letting out a powerful blue arrow attack that destroyed the cliff that she was on. Akia manages to land a devastating blow onto the crack that was on the madam's body. This time the spider was the one gasping for air. Bakir wasted no time at all and started to charge towards her once again. This time his eyes went full bloodhound mode, zipping through the forest like a speedster. He finally reaches the madam, unleashing another powerful bask of a blow onto her causing her to scream out in pain. But his rage doesn't end here. He unleashes the Baskerville first technique, deeply piercing Madam. Ian and Ahun could only stare in awe over what he did as she realized that he had gone inside the Madam. Deep inside the Madam, Vakir started to unleash all of his Baskerville techniques, from the second technique called Biting Fong to the third technique called Slicing Fong, the fourth technique called Tearing Fong and finally the fifth technique called the Shredding Fong. All of Vakir's moves made a huge impact as the madam started to cough up her purple blood everywhere. But the Hound of Baskerville wasn't done yet as his rage continued to rupture, vowing to no longer live the life of a bloodhound that is led by its shackles. Using the madam's eyes as a way out, Vakir unleashes the sixth technique called Crushing Fong, breaking through her eye and destroying all the chains that held him down.